Welcome to the Financial Fast Lane. My name is Lane Martinson. And so, what are the risks and the problems associated with a government who prints large amounts of money to meet its obligations? Now, there is a theory, it's called modern monetary theory, that many people have subscribed to. And it is the idea that a government doesn't really need to live within its, a budget because it can just print and create money. But, but does that work and, and how will that impact us? Well, the direct result of inflation is money supply. And so it, during the pandemic we had huge um, trillions of dollars printed and, and flooded through stimulus into the economy which definitely stimulated the economy, but it also is now causing significant inflation. Now, uh, I want to introduce you to David McKnight. David is um, a best-selling author. He's authored several books. He's, got, he's a thought leader within the financial services industry, and he has become a close personal friend of mine. Um, I respect David a lot, and he created a video where he talks about this issue and modern monetary theory. And so I'm going to um, insert some footage here from Dave's video and then I'll conclude at the end. Hey folks, I'm best-selling author David McKnight. In today's video, I'm going to discuss the current status of modern monetary theory, particularly in light of the massive wave of inflation that has recently swamped our economy. Many of you know I'm not a fan of Dr. Stephanie Kelton, author of The Deficit Myth. In her book, she makes the case that because the U.S. government denominates its debt in U.S. dollars, then it can print unlimited amounts of money to pay for, well, just about anything it wants. We're talking universal health care, a guaranteed $15 minimum wage, free college tuition for everyone, liquidating student debt, etc. Well, the COVID pandemic of 2020 and 2021 seemed like the perfect time to test drive her theory. And that's exactly what the U.S. government did. During that two-year period, Congress approved four huge stimulus packages along with unprecedented monetary stimulus from the Fed. Let's take a look at it. On March 27th, 2020, the CARES Act was signed into law. Price tag, $2.2 trillion. On April 24th, 2020, Congress replenished the Paycheck Protection Program and Economic Injury uh, Disaster Loan Program. Price tag, $484 billion. On December 21st, 2020, another stimulus package was signed into law. Price tag, $900 billion. On March 11th, 2021, a fourth stimulus package was signed into law. Price tag, $1.9 billion. All of these stimulus programs were in addition to all of the normal increases in unemployment and other government safety nets that usually happen during a recession. As a result of this huge infusion of cash that was now sloshing around in the economy, Americans started to save more money. In fact, they saved $2.5 trillion more than their pre-pandemic averages. And this, of course, led to massive consumer spending, which in turn led to massive shortages and supply chain disruptions. And guess what? When you have a lot more money chasing a lot fewer goods and services, then the result is predictable massive amounts of inflation. The main culprit, it was clearly the stimulus package strategy that was taken directly from the modern monetary theory playbook. What can we conclude from our nation's little experiment with modern monetary theory? Well, if it isn't dead, then it should be. Not only did it fail in our country, but it's failed everywhere else it's ever been attempted. We're talking Venezuela, Argentina, Zimbabwe, Weimar, Germany, you name it. And how do you fix the damage caused by our misguided experiment with modern monetary theory? Well, as we've seen, the only real tool the Fed has in its toolbox is to raise interest rates. This will stifle the economy depress the stock market, and make housing less affordable because of those higher interest rates. On June 10th, I tweeted out, is it just me or is Dr. Stephanie Kelton's Twitter account gone suspiciously quiet? 
Well, here's to hoping that her suddenly silent Twitter account is evidence that modern monetary theory really is dead. And if modern monetary theory really is dead, we have to face two important realities. First, we won't be able to print our way out of our problems in the future. And second, the only way the Fed can pay for its $239 trillion in unfunded obligations for Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid is to raise your taxes. All the more reason why you should take advantage of tax-free investments while taxes are historically low. Pay taxes on those highly taxable 401ks and IRAs while taxes are on sale so that by the time tax rates do go up, you've done all the heavy lifting and you can take those dollars out tax-free. Make it your goal to be in the 0% tax bracket. Why? Because if tax rates double, two times zero is still zero. By the way, stay tuned for the release of my upcoming novel entitled The Infinity Code, where a group of 20 Harvard graduates from 1985 forms a shadowy, shadowy organization whose goal is to completely remake U.S. monetary policy by secret, secretly implementing, you guessed it, modern monetary theory. I hope you found this video insightful. Uh, I know it's not really a pleasant topic and maybe even controversial. Um, I would welcome your comments below if you disagree with anything that you heard here or any insights that you have. And I, I do try to read comments and respond when I can. Now, if you haven't um, read David B. Knight's The Power of Zero, that is a great book to read, and so I recommend that, and his other books as well. And he has a YouTube channel, so you might want to check that out. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode of The Financial Fast Lane.